Welcome to the Global Investor Podcast, a show that focuses on helping foreign investors enter the lucrative U.S. real estate market. Host Charles Carrillo combines decades of real estate investing experience with a professional background in international banking to interview experts in all areas of U.S. real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Charles Carrillo. Welcome to another episode of the Global Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Crillo. Today, we have Lauren Cohen. Lauren is an international lawyer, realtor, and cross-border expert. Real estate investors and entrepreneurs hire her to help overcome obstacles and navigate business and investment across borders so that they are able to invest, live, work, and play anywhere. So thank you so much for being on the show, Lauren. Thank you, Charles. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, now that we're trading off, now it's my turn to be interviewed. Yes, yes. And I was on Lauren's podcast, which was great. And um, you'll have to check that out. And she'll give you all that information uh, here during the po this podcast. But um, so Lauren, please give us a little background on yourself prior to starting your current business. Well, I'm originally from Toronto, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, very proud Canadian. As you can see, the Canadian flag is dominant in my background there. And I moved to Florida about 20 years ago. And I've been working in immigration ever since my then husband was deported on the way back from our honeymoon. And I was like, oh, okay, signs are telling you to look into new avenues. So he was expeditiously removed, put into immigration jail, and then deported on the way back from our honeymoon. That's a story that really I share with nobody else. And I said, okay, I'm going to prevent this from happening to others. So I moved into the crazy field of immigration law. And because of my business background and I've been writing business plans for many years already, I kind of combined all of them together. I was writing extremely sophisticated visa business plans for many years, and I still do. But now I'm more of the concierge, helping people really and truly invest across borders. That's why I started the podcast, Investing Across Borders. And in doing that, I just hosted a webinar, as you know, Charles, called Immigrate Through Real Estate, How to Immigrate Through Real Estate. And that's my kind of special sweet spot, which is why we connected, because I really love the real estate model and it's a very unique way of accessing immigration status. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that I want to touch on here with visa and immigration policy a little later on and getting that status for people planning on investing in the U.S. Um, give us a little bit of background here. If a, if a foreigner was looking to invest in the U.S., what are the first few things they should take into consideration when starting that process? Taxes. Taxes. So the number one most important thing that most people tend to overlook, there's, there's really two. One is hiring a professional. And instead of hiring a professional, they just go and haphazardly invest. And they think that if there's a realtor involved, and you and I are both licensed realtors, that that's it. It's, it's, it's all done. It's not. You need to hire a professional team, especially when you're investing across borders, because everything that's done that's handled domestically is magnified when you're investing across borders. So the first most important thing that I recommend is hire a trusted advisor, a single source pro service provider that can manage and direct all of the other service providers that you need. This is true whether or not you plan to get a visa, you plan to deal with immigration status. So when you're investing across borders, I have a 10 steps to immigrate through real estate um, infographic I created. And the first seven of those steps are applicable whether you're Im immigrating or not. And the second most important thing that most people overlook is not just getting tax advice on the subject country coming into the US, for example, but tax advice about how that impacts your home country. If you're moving or if you're not, it doesn't matter because most people just think that they need guidance. And there's a lot of companies that offer, especially Canadians, guidance on how to invest in real estate, how to invest in US real estate. You know, like tonight I'm hosting a, a webinar, how to, in, how to qualify, I'm sorry, how to invest in real estate without qualifying for a mortgage. Well, it's different if you're in Canada or the US, that's part of why I'm partners with a Canadian um, business partner. And, and it's different also for people from the UK, for people from France, for people from Brazil, for people from um, Italy. And it's, it's all about making sure that you have the right components and the right guidance in place, because without that, you're going to fail. Okay. So tax is number one. And uh, another question I hear a lot when people reach out to me about investing in the United States and they're based uh, internationally is in what instances would you suggest a foreign investor to set up a U.S. entity when investing Every in real instance. estate? Every instance. There is Even if it's personal real estate? Maybe if you're 
buying a little vacation property in Florida from, you know, wherever or Arizona or whatever, maybe owning it personally, depending on the tax implications for you. But I generally think if you're investing and it's an investment and you look at it as an investment, you need an entity because that's going to help you a lot in terms of your tax implications in your home country. So okay. almost every single time I'm going to recommend that. It doesn't mean that it's one size fits all and there are circumstances when it may not be needed. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, again, making sure that you go through the steps, step by step. Definitely. And then having that, uh, someone that a professional, not just somebody that's licensed, not every attorney and every CPA is knowledgeable with foreign investors. And that's, it's a very niche industry. And obviously that's what you focus in, Lauren. Yes. Thank you. So are there any common issues? We talked about taxes. We talked about, um, having someone uh, that's knowledgeable in, uh, as a professional with them. Is there any other common issues during the process that are outside of that, that people usually, not that they overlook, but a problem that is, is typically someone will run into a roadblock when yes. they're doing this. Taking a salary or trying to get to trying to take an in, income from your business that's not passive without getting mm. the proper visa, um, okay. not handling certain circumstances correctly from the get-go and getting stopped at the border, coming to visit your properties and saying the wrong thing to the border or customs officer, uh, yeah, I'm going to build my investment business. Um, okay, where's your visa? Uh, what visa? What are you talking about? Um, honestly, at the end of the day, Charles, the most, the most important thing that I can impart to anybody that is interested in looking at investing from anywhere in the world into the US or Canada for that matter, is to get professional advice. Because you, and it's not one size fits all. I'm not going to go to my dentist to ask him to fix my car or her, right? Okay, so I'm, and, and I'm, I'm going to be a little um, judgmental about realtors. Uh, way too many realtors are trying to give legal advice. Mm -hmm. There's a reason we go to law school. And there's, you know, we are, stay in, our, stay in your lane and focus on what you do best and provide guidance from there. Right. Yeah. And if you're finding a realtor uh, that you're talking to, and a lot of people start backwards and they'll find a realtor and then, you know, you, you sh they should be able to point you in the direction of someone that should be able to assist you. And that's if you're a U.S. investor or you're a foreign investor, but most realtors aren't going to have a contact to someone that specializes in international law or international taxes or the tax consequences in your home country versus us. And so it's very important to have that. Um, that's, it's interesting when you say that about going back and forth and saying what your purpose is at the border. Yeah. I one time made the mistake one time of saying I was traveling and uh, it was for, for business and the two other people in my party zipped right through waiting on the other side for me 15 minutes later to come out all bruised up from the uh, passport agent and, um, of all the questions that they threw at me. So it's, it's very important to know what you're doing. It's uh, when you're, when you're crossing borders. And In advance, it. not as you're doing it. Right. And that's really important. Um, to, uh, hold on one moment. I'm sorry. So the other thing that's important is um, un, like, here's a perfect example. You, I mean, everybody knows Tony Robbins, right. And Tony actually had an issue when he was going into Canada. If you look on YouTube, I think it is, you can find this, uh, this dialogue from Tony about going into Canada. Now, who doesn't know Tony Robbins? Okay. <laughs> but they didn't care. And they stopped him. And he was going to run an event in, I think, Calgary, actually. And he had a whole challenge at the border. Now, these things are avoidable, right? And it's really important to understand that if you have the right, if you take the right steps ahead of time, you don't want to just go, you're not going to buy real estate just because you like the look of it, right? You shouldn't invest in real estate across borders just because it seems like a sexy or fun thing to do. Yeah. You want to do it with the right guidance because at the end of the day, you need to treat it as an investment, not just as, oh, let's just buy the stock, you know, yeah. to invest in and no, no due diligence. Let, no, let's backtrack, do some due diligence and make sure due diligence and make sure that we invest properly, appropriately, and with the right precautions and safeguards in place at the time of investment and before. Some fantastic advice for anybody investing in U.S. real estate. Um, 
How are real estate investments able to be used to qualify for visa immigration status since this is one of your specialties at your firm? Yes. So there's a big difference between a passive real estate investor, like most of the people that are investing in, in your real estate businesses, are ter- it's, it's a turnkey model that you're offering, right? Yes. And that turnkey model will not work for a real estate for an, for an immigrate for a real estate investor that wants to also immigrate they have to be actively involved in running the business they have to need to have boots on the ground so a turnkey isn't going to work it doesn't it just flies in the face of that right cuz mm-hmm. they're coming to you you're handling everything perfect but for the person that wants to take your turnkey business and turn it into an active business they could add a property management franchise or a multitude of other things so the difference between a a single unit investor or a couple of single family homes and a investor that could qualify for a visa with five or more doors generally. It's not about necessarily the amount of the investment. It's about the difference between an active boots on the ground person handling the business, business owner versus a passive real estate investor. That's the main distinction. Okay. Yeah, very interesting because if you're investing passively in a syndication as a limited partner, which is uh, what a bunch of our listeners do on the show here, it is something that that's why Lauren had spoken earlier about earning income in a country and knowing that you need to have that work visa because it's not passive. You're actually going to be there earning it as a wage. So um, what are some of the best visa options for real estate investors? There's really several available, but the most common one that I like, and this is based on treaty, is the E2 visa. The E-2 visa is called, it's known, it's a treaty investor visa. It's based on a substantial investment in a non-marginal business that has to be more than just replacing your job, okay? The E-2 visa is based on treaty. The U.S. does not have treaties with every single country. For example, Brazil, Russia, South Africa, China, India don't have visas. Very large population, so no visa. Not, not the E2. So what a lot of people do, like I have a client now, South African, he has a Lithuanian passport because his family's from Lithuania. So a lot of Brazilians have access to an Italian passport. A lot of Venezuelans have access to a Spanish passport. Go back in time and get that passport. That's a good option. Or invest, in pa- invest passively in a country like Turkey or Grenada or Moldova, and we can get you a visa through those countries into the US. The other option is EB-5, which is less popular these days. That's about investing now 900,000 or 1.8 million, and you have to create at least 10 new jobs. So if you have, if you're of substantial means and you want a green card, that's the way to go. Okay, interesting. So a, a question that I get a lot, and I don't really know how to answer it because we're kind of in this transition period. A new administration the white is in the White House. Uh, what changes do you foresee that may affect international and U.S. investors alike in real estate? I should have told you not to ask me this question. <laughs> um, I wish I had a crystal ball because I really don't know. Um, I'm hoping that the change is going to be positive. It's been very challenging for immigration lawyers and for the immigration world in, during the Trump administration. There's no disputing that. It's just, it, it's a fact. It's not about politics or political leaning or anything. It's a fact. And you know, for the past year, many visas since COVID happened have been completely like um, removed or there's no processing of them like the L1 and H1B and so on. So I am hoping, and this is gonna depend on the business orientation because I'm very focused on business immigration. There's no doubt that Biden will be more favorable for immigration, but the question remains how much more favorable for business immigration, which is about investment immigration, which affects obviously real estate investment and how to invest through real estate. I'm sorry, how to immigrate through real estate. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just have to see. And I, I don't think it's going to be for 2021, which we're in right now. It's going to be probably, we're going to have to see yeah. later this year. And it'll probably start 2022, as I'm told right. from my advisors. So um, I kind of want to drill down to, we've spoken about different uh, different situations that your, your, uh, your clients have had to overcome. When your clients have lost money investing in real estate, whether they're US or foreign clients, what mistakes did they make or commonly make do you see? I haven't had clients lose money in real estate investing. Okay. But 
I will say that when you see people that have lost money in real estate investing, it's because they didn't get the proper advice when they were doing the invest investing. So, you know, coming from Canada where real estate prices, especially where I'm from in Toronto are completely through the roof. You're never, you're not going to be able to really build a real estate investment pro portfolio there unless you're of significant wealth. So people come south of the border so that they can build that. But it's, it's again, I, I, the biggest mistakes I see is people that don't get the right tax advice or structure advice, and then it impacts them in a hugely negative way financially because of that. I have a client, for example, that spent over 100000 in taxes that could have been avoided had they had, had the proper setup. And this is not an uncommon thing. So, it, you know, it's all about putting that strategy, that comprehensive strategy in place before you invest and make sure that you work with that professional team as you're adding to your investments, um, changing, selling, buy, buying, you know, flipping, wholesaling, holding, renting, everything. You don't want to just say, okay, let's buy the property and we're done. It's not like that. No, it, it's definitely, especially if you're coming foreign into the United States, make sure that you're giving lead time because to get certain, you know, like your I-10 or whatever it might be that's required for you, um, it takes several months to do that and to it do does. it correctly. And as you should be in contact with your local attorneys and CPA on a regular basis as being an investor, you should do it with your U.S. Uh, counsel as well. So just make sure that you're in com. It's not, uh, one of my accountants always gets mad because he would tell me about clients and they say, oh, this guy doubled his income this year and he never called me. And, uh, you know, and that's just one of those things where- It's just stupid. You're throwing yeah. money away. And another thing also for real estate investors, and this is for you too, Charles, is there's probably a lot of foreign nationals that want to invest in what you're doing, mm -hmm. but you need to go and get them. You need to access them. You need to just to be, you know, educate them. You need to be available to them. They need to know about you. They need to learn about you. How do you make that happen? So that's another um, value add that I bring to the table. One of the things I wanted to mention is in my process, whenever I have a client from another country, I'm going to make sure that almost the first thing they do is speak to a cross-border tax advisor that not only understands the subject country, but the home country as well. So it's, you know, most accountants here in the U.S., they understand a little bit, especially in Florida, about cross-border stuff because there's so many foreign nationals investing in Florida, but that doesn't mean that they're an expert. So I work with experts that actually focus on international investing, and that's really important. Right. The thing, though, is that when you're investing anywhere, whether it's in your home country or you're investing here in the U.S., you want to build a team Team. of people in there. And that's going to have your real estate brokers. That's going to have your attorney. That's going to have your CPA. So when you're doing in the United States, the best way of starting that is to find someone, find a professional that you can start off of and start getting referrals from them. And usually if you're a U.S. investor and you don't have any of the cross border, you can just work off your realtor and say, hey, who's a good property manager? Who's a good lender for this and everything like that? When you're getting into more of the intricacies of foreign investing, you really have to start with someone that's uh, kind of licensed and then kind of working from there and let them give you referrals. Who would be a good lender for this? Um, who do I use for a CPA? Lenders are key. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and, and also another thing is like, you can't just call up a lender and say, hey, I'm Joe Schmo and I need money. I'm from Italy. No, but if you work with somebody like Charles or Lauren that has contacts, that handle foreign investor lending, then we can pave the path. I just had a gentleman now, literally now, asking me about banking because, you know, setting up bank accounts virtually, not most banks don't offer that, but I have a banker that offers just that. That's kind of his unique selling proposition because I can bring him clients every day that don't have to ever physically be here in the U.S., in right. order to get a bank account. That's a big deal. Yeah. That that's, that will save someone 40 hours of work right there, trying to find a bank and trying to go through all the headaches and scanning yep. and sending back. Because uh, we have clients like that as well that uh, we're setting up entities here in the US as holding companies to invest. And um, it's, it's not anywhere near as easy as you think. And even opening a bank account for a US person is not as easy as it was 20 years ago. It's right. Or closing one. Right, true. They want Everything. you to jump through hoops. They're trying to do that retention, right? And that's something yeah. too, it's with 
Um, I think it's across uh, the world with it just getting tighter and tighter with more regulations. It's more expensive to service customers, especially in the banking. So it's something where uh, it just becomes more difficult. So mm -hmm. um, I want to get like uh, one question before we kind of wrap up here. And other than you carving out a niche for your business, what do you think are the main factors that have contributed to your success? Being very focused on my clients' needs and not being a one-size-fits-all volume service provider. A lot of people, you know, I created a system, and you don't think you know this, I created a system a couple of years ago called Scale Up Checkup. And Scale Up Checkup was designed, it's an assessment tool that assesses a business in seven essential areas, analyzes the gaps, and provides a, a risk analysis and, and solution. It's called a success blueprint to fill the gaps so that they can scale up successfully. Um, and, you know, I'm guilty myself because my business, my, I have certain parts of my business that will, that can scale and certain other parts that can my, my real estate business can scale every day of the week. Cause I'm with this cloud-based brokerage, but my, my personalized customized business can't scale. It's not scalable, certain parts of it. And I pride myself on that. It may hold me back from certain um, opportunities, but that's okay because that's not the piece I want to scale. I would love to, to duplicate myself, but at the end of the day, I can't. And that's okay also because duplicating myself means that I'm not, it's the personal relationships that I pride myself on. My biggest success is based on relationship capital. And when somebody isn't happy with me, which thank God doesn't happen very often, I'm going to turn over every stone to figure out a way to make sure they are happy at the end of the day. Awesome. Okay. That's great. That's great. Personal relationships are very important in any business and uh, especially when investing in real estate and especially in the international foreign investing niche that uh, we both are involved with. So how can our listeners learn more about you and your business, Lauren? Well, I have a lot of ways. I'd love to share a free download with you about how to invest across borders, which I'll give you access to that and a coupon code. You can reach me on all over Facebook. I have cross border, uh, cross border. Oh my God. Creative cross border Academy is one of my groups. And of course my company is E council global. That's E C O U N C I L global G L O B A L. And please subscribe to my podcast. It's called investing across borders. It's on all of the, you know, Apple and Spotify and Google and you name it. And um, there, I just interviewed the head of global operations. He, we just posted this, I think today, um, Michael Valdez. And it, it's, I have a lot of fun with it. And I would love to help any of your listeners that are interested in more than a passive investment opportunity and in helping to transition that into more active. Awesome. So Lauren, I will put all those links into our show notes uh, for YouTube and also for the podcast. And thank you so much for being on today and uh, looking forward to connecting with you uh, here in the near future. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and take good care. Hi, guys. It's Charles from the Global Investors Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're interested in getting involved with real estate, but you don't know where to begin, set up a free 30-minute strategy call with me at ScheduleCharles.com. That's ScheduleCharles.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Global Investor Podcast. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to get new weekly episodes. For more resources and to receive our newsletter, please visit globalinvestorpodcast.com. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars Incorporated exclusively.